Did you have your hands up? Has anyone here think they've got that endurance to study for seven years? <laughs> right, yes. Um, I know some people to get their PhD, it took them 15 years. They had to study for 15 years before they could get their PhD. That's a long time, isn't it? Right? Really long time. So, Sister William, have you got your hands up, Mum? Just a bit. I expected you to come with me. <laughs> 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 
will never fix up. Never. I think we want to have equal opportunity. I'm coming to you, Mark. I think we want to have equal opportunity. How about husband and father? Yeah. <laughs> you know, how long do they have to stay the floor? It's a lifetime, isn't it? You know, you will never stop being a wife and mother, a husband and dad. She's the best. I'm thinking about um, justification. Yes, what about, about a lifetime? All right. Never be made person until we die. All right. Amen. Amen. Right. Thank you, sister. Right. So justification is something that we have to, we will never stop learning. Right? It is a lifetime process. So even though we have got a, a profession that takes a long time for us to achieve, and even then, as many of you in here have gone through similar processes, you still have to be doing courses. Every, is it every two or three years, like in social work, you have to refresh every, and nurses, I think, you have to refresh yourself every two or three years. So you're constantly learning. So it is something that we cannot get away from. So therefore, we have to have endurance. It is something that we cannot... I remember with my wife when she did her teaching, and on her last day of her exam, she came home, she gathered all her books, packed them into a bag, and I remember she went like this. <laughs> no more. <laughs> and she decided she was not going to study anymore. That four years was enough. But, Let's turn back to our scripture in 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. What does it tell us? I'm not going to keep it very long today. What does it tell us? Right, study. Right, it means study. How many of us here enjoy studying? Okay. At least you have one of these. Right? You enjoy studying. Oh, Clarence looks as if he enjoys it too. <laughs> right? You enjoy studying. Oh, good girl. Right? Who else enjoys studying? I must be very honest, brethren. Take it from me, and for many of us who have gone through that process, studying is hard. Right? I'm not going to stand there and lie to you. Studying is hard. But you know, it is not impossible. It is something that if you put your mind to it, there's no limit to where you can go. Yes. It is up to you and your ambition. If you want to achieve something, you will achieve it. But you need to study. And this is what scripture is telling us. We need to study to show ourselves approved. What should we be studying? Is it, you know, when you go to uni nowadays, they've got so many different areas. 
like for example tree psychology, animal psychology. Right? Yes. Sister Willox. <laughs> Ask yourself the question. What do you get out of that? You know, they've got some obscure type of studies. At the end of the day, you ask yourself the question. What really is the profession? But the Bible is talking about studying the Word of God. Right? Studying the Word of God. As Sister Ade mentioned, that sanctification is a lifetime process. When you and I begin to study the Word of God, it is a lifetime process. It's not something that we can pick up this minute. It is not something we can pick up this minute and put it down the next. It will not work. You will find that when you study other subjects, whatever it might be, doctors, lawyers, whatever, you've got a tendency to remember what you've studied. But I don't know if I've got a witness here. When you take up your Bible and you read something, we have a tendency for the next minute to forget. And it's not because we are, we are not interested, but it's because Satan do not want us to remember what God is telling us. And because of that, many of us plays into his hand. Many of us become careless along the way. We forget it is a lifetime thing. We need to study. And, you know, as Brother Scarlett will tell you, that each time that you read the Bible, you may have read Genesis thousands of times, each time that you read it, you will discover something new. This is what it tells us. If we go on to 2 Timothy 3, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, 16 and 17, what does that one tell us? 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17. Have we got the Bible on there? <laughs> okay. Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. All scripture is given by the of God. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Right. God. <coughs> Amen. What are the benefits of studying the Word of God according to Second Timothy three? What are the benefits? <coughs> Someone can answer. I'm not going to instruct you in right way. I'm sorry, anyway. What are the benefits? No, it says it, it instructs you in right doing. Right. So the benefit is that we become knowledgeable in doing the right things. 
right? If we want to know the right things to do in our daily living, we've got to study the Word of God. So when we're saying we're doing wrong, don't look on the light that there are two. Right? When we're doing wrong, and we want to know that we're doing wrong, we read the Word of God. Especially out of the Avon Church. Okay? So, when we study the Word of God, we know how to behave, what to do, what not to do. It is important. Not only that. Let's look at Timothy 3, verses 2. <clears throat> Two and three. Second Timothy three. He said what? For men. Right. So Timothy again, he seemed to pick up. <coughs> he wrote on about us that this, what the scripture is for, why we should study it. <coughs> it also tells us what we have become when we don't study God's word. So all the things that, oh, they've taken it off. All the things that he have just said in 2 Timothy 3, verse 2 and 3, is the result of people not studying God's words. It's a result of people applying what Satan wants them to do. So therefore, you and I need to study. We need to study God's word. We're taking it for granted that the preacher comes and he preaches and you listen to what he has to say and you go home and that's it. But you never pick up the Bible yourself and read it to find what it has to say for you. And the reason for that, some of us are afraid. We are afraid because if we read, actually read the Bible, it is going to convict us. It's going to point us, you're going the wrong way. Some people, I remember <coughs> one year, I had some students, and I noticed this young man, <coughs> whenever there was tutorial, he never turns up for tutorial. And he attended one lecture and I said to him, look here, <coughs> I need to see you, sorry, <coughs> I need to see you immediately. And I knew he was going to run off. So what I did, to finish the lecture, I stood at the back of the class at the entrance door and I finished and I said right you can go and I waited at the door for him because I knew he was going to be the first one to walk through that door 
And indeed, he was the first one wanted to go through, and I grabbed him, <laughs> took him aside, and tried to talk with him to find out, you know, I said to him, look here, you're not making progress. You know, you need to produce some essays. I need to see where you are. I need to see if you're taking anything in. And at the end of the day, I discovered, or he said to me in uh, no uncertain language, I'm not really interested. I'm only coming because uh, my parents. Yeah, and he tried to escape. And I'm saying, brethren, many of us do not study. It could be because of parents, tradition, we think we know it all, we think we understand it already, whatever our reasons. I'm saying don't be fooled by it. Don't be fooled, brethren, because what Satan is trying to do, he's trying to take away our freedom of choice. He's trying to make us feel that we are okay. Because once he can keep us in that position where we cannot move, he knows that he has got us. And that our eyes will remain blind. So therefore, I'm recommending to us that we study God's word. The same way you've got an appetite to what, study other things, study God's words. And when we do that, no one will be able to tell us stupidness. We will know the truth. We will know it. And therefore, brethren, I would recommend to us the word of God that we continue to study it each day because as we do we will understand and know God better in our lives. May God help us as we continue to read his word. Thank you. Amen. Amen.